You have one to everyone and point them all at the moon. Unfortunately, the lasers turn the atmosphere to plasma, instantly igniting the Earth's surface and killing us all. But let's assume that the lasers somehow pass through the atmosphere without interacting. Under those circumstances, it turns out the Earth still catches fire. The reflected light from the moon is 4,000 times brighter than the noonday sun. But forget the Earth. What happens to the moon? The lasers pump out enough energy to vaporize two meters of lunar bedrock per second. However, once chunks of moon rock are vaporized, they don't disappear, but instead the surface layer of the moon quickly becomes a plasma, which then blocks the rest of the beam. As our laser pours more and more energy into the plasma, the plasma keeps getting hotter and hotter, enough that the most energetic plasma particles blast into space at terrific speed. This flow of material effectively turns the entire surface of the moon into a rocket engine, and a surprisingly efficient one. Using lasers to blast off surface material like this is called laser ablation, and it turns out to be a promising method for spacecraft propulsion, and moon propulsion. The moon is massive, but we're dealing with a very powerful rock plasma jet. A very rough estimate suggests that the moon is pushed out of range of our lasers within a few short months. In that time, the jet also scours the face of the Earth clean and destroys the lasers, but we're pretending they're invulnerable. The moon keeps most of its mass, but escapes Earth's gravity and enters a lopsided orbit around the sun. This weird orbit isn't stable, and the moon would eventually either be slingshotted into the sun, ejected through the outer solar system, or slammed into one of the planets, quite possibly ours. I think we can all agree that, in that case, we deserve it. And that, at last, is enough power.